Shall a trumpet be blown in the city and the people not be afraid? Shall there be evil in the city and the Lord hath not done it? Surely the Lord God will do nothing, but he revealed his secret unto his servants, the prophets. That which hath been is now, and that which is to be hath already been, and God requireth that which is past. Okay, so we've added a few to this, and it really solidifies our belief that Jesus will come back for Israel when they're 80 years old. And that'll be 2028 at the Day of Atonement, September 30th, 2028. Count back seven years. That's this year, folks. We got to go. All right. So Moses was 80 when he was sent to free God's people. Let my people go. And he highlighted he was 80 when he sent him. Joseph ruled over Prince of Egypt for 80 years. When he was 30, that's when the Pharaoh had the dream and Joseph let God interpret it for him and he shared it with the Pharaoh. Seven years of famine and then seven, or seven years of plenty and then seven years of famine. So Joseph was 37 when the seven years of famine hit and then he ruled for 73 more. Huge numbers here. But he ruled as prince of Egypt for 80 years. Boaz was 80 years old when he married who was 40. David, changing over from King David to King Solomon, was at the 80th year. And when Jesus comes back, he'll be the prince, the king of peace, the true shalom man at, in the 80th year. Jerusalem will be 80 years old, and that is from the time they fled to, they were freed to go to Israel in 1948. 80 years later is when they will make their mass return. Jesus came in the 80th Jubilee. Of all the years he could have come, he came right there in the 80th Jubilee, and God counts years as Jubilees. So a day is like a thousand years, but also a year for God is like a jubilee. So when he said, man's days, I will strive with man for only 120. The 6,000th year is 50 year jubilee times 120. So we are in the one, we have passed the 120th jubilee that we were promised. And so now we must ascend to God. So Jesus came in the 80th Jubilee. Psalm 90 clearly identifies generation of a man is 70 years, but if by strength, if by rebellion, those years could go to 80, but their, their years are trouble, strife, tribulation, and then we all fly away. So God said generation will be 80 at max. And I'm going to uh, play this little clip uh, right after I say the rest of this of the um, leader in Israel actually pointing out the 73 year and the 80 year. One of our uh, brothers on another channel, which I'll post. When his branch is yet tender and putteth forth leaves, ye know that summer is nigh. So likewise ye, when ye shall see all these things, know that it is near, even at the doors. Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass till all these things be fulfilled. The days of our years are threescore years and ten, and if by reason of strength they be fourscore years, yet is their strength labor and sorrow, for it is soon cut off, and we fly away. And we do have a legacy, the Jewish people, that's, we've got this bug that haunts us of division. We lost our first Jewish home to division between uh, Israel and Judea. By the way, do you folks know what was the specific reason they separated? Anyone know? What, what was the, the igniter? It was taxes. Yeah, Solomon's son, Rehoboam, decided to raise taxes. Bad idea. <laughs> <laughs> it's 
So we, uh, we lost 80% of the Jewish people. All of us are descendants only, only of Judea and Benjamin, right? And then we regrouped, formed another house, another home, another Jewish state. The first one survived 80 years, the first temple, 80 years. King David and Solomon, about 80 years. The second temple, or the second commonwealth of the Jewish people, survived as a sovereign and united country about 73 years during the Maccabees. And then again, internal strife tore us apart. So the Jewish people have never exceeded 80 years in Eretz Israel as a sovereign united state. We're now 73 years old. Man, this time, we're not going to let it fall apart. We're not going to let it fall apart. That's why... For when they shall say, Peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them, as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. Um, he actually uh, pointed this out. It was fantastic. Okay? Now, this... This was also from this book of Jubilees. But Adam was given Eve in the 80th day of that first Jubilee. After, and then they, they tilled the garden, naked but not afraid, not ashamed, for a perfect seven years. But Eve was given in that 80th day. And I'll, I'll post that little uh, clip from uh, the book of Jubilees. But back to Levitical law, if a woman should bring forth a female child, before that child is brought to the tabernacle, she must go through two weeks, 14 days of purification, and then continue the purification of her body for 66 days. 14 plus 66 is 80 days. So the female child is able to be brought to the tabernacle at 80 days. So Leviticus, Leviticus 12, 5, the law of purification to make atonement. And Jesus comes back on atonement when they are 80. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 different prophecies about 80. And I believe if we continue to look, we'll find more, probably 17. But uh, that is, again, solidifying a confirmation that we have you know, for in, in the mouth of two or three witnesses, an, an issue is established. And we've just continued to add on to that more and more witnesses. Yea, we can find none that have an 81-year prophecy or an 82, 83, 85, 90. We don't find those prophecies at all. So if you find one, please let us know and we'll, uh, we'll match it up against these nine and see if it measures up. Okay, I want to wrap this up and uh, get this out to you. I'm sure everybody's curious what we're thinking. But again, these shing feast days, these timelines are not mine. They're not even Mr. Bones. These are God's appointed times. Read the book of Daniel. Read uh, the prophecies in uh, Ezekiel and Jeremiah. Read the book of Revelation. He specifically says, 1260 days and 1290 and 1335. He says that his appointments will be fulfilled and refulfilled. That which has been done will be done again. The Lord requireth it. So when he came, the trumpets blew and he was born. He was wrapped in atonement rags, the high priest, and he tabernacled with us. So he fulfilled those right off the bat. And then he fulfilled Passover and unleavened bread and first fruits. And he fulfilled the Pentecost. And as we broke it apart, he was the bread and the wine and the oil. So all that's been fulfilled. So for, we know he's going to fulfill these again at the end, but that is his style. Now, 
from these days, and I'm talking about all of them, from October 7th through the 29th, 30th, even 31st. That's the day after. That's the Hoshana Rabat. No, that's the Simchat Torah. I always get those mixed up. Simchat Torah, return to Torah. So from October 7th, which we passed, all the way until the 31st, we're still in these fall feasts. From those dates, if we go 1290, we're still in the Passover area, which is April 12th through the 20th of 2025. But also, we can go 1260 and end up beforehand. From Day of Atonement, which is the 10th day of the seventh month, 1260 is three years and six months. So go three years and then six months brings you to the 10th day of the first month. That's the day Jesus rode in on a donkey into Jerusalem and was proclaimed Hosanna in the highest. And the Pharisee says, shut them up. And he said, hey, if they shut up, the rocks will scream out. But I believe those people were there because of the prophecy of Daniel and they knew they should be there on that day because they expected the Messiah to ride in on a donkey. And that's why they had their palm branches and they were all ready. So 1260 brings us right to the 10th day where the Antichrist could mimic what Jesus did, then be killed of a mortal head wound. Again, that's already happened, but it'll happen again. And then he'll resurrect and that's probably when the witnesses will die and resurrect. I mean, all these things are, are, have the ability to, to replay that same story. And then 1335 from this feast area, I actually have this um, from Day of Atonement, October 17, 1335 brings you to the 15th day of the third month, which is the true Shavuot. Okay? So, you know, trumpets, we, we just... We thought that was a start, but these, these dates are not nailed to trumpets, okay? Because the fall feasts have many things happening, and the spring feasts have many things happening, and then we got the whole Feast of Weeks, there's many things happening. So all this is still fine, and, you know, we have this fixed day of Day of Atonement, he comes back, but like I said last time, I know the story is about atonement, but I know he'll fulfill trumpets on the way. So whether that's seven days beforehand that he blows that trumpet and we come back for seven days of awesomeness and then Day of Atonement is where it is described that he is wearing the red, but it could be this is the Jubilee year. And so trumpets and atonements the same time. So all of that works. All I know is it'll work out perfect, okay? And then the extra time, 1335, brings us for a total of 1260 and 1335 is 2,595 days. And that brings us to Hanukkah, to dedicate the temple, which is 75 days after the Day of Atonement. So everything fits perfect in his plan, and we are not ready to take any of this away yet because it all still fits perfectly. Um, I know some people are ready to jump to 2022, but you gotta understand, if the tribulation starts and ends with fall feasts, then if we do anything in 2022, that means tribulation has to start in 2022 fall feast, meaning the end of the tribulation 2029, Israel is 81 years old. So how do you explain all those 80 year prophecies? I don't think so. And I also don't think it's possible for us to continue in his promise. Revelation 3.10 because you have kept the word of my testimony. Therefore, will I keep you from the trial that is coming upon the whole world to test them that dwell upon the earth. I will keep you from that. Now I tell you before it come that when it is come to pass, you may believe that I am. And she brought forth a man child who was to rule all nations with the rod of iron. And her child was caught up unto God and to his throne. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout and with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. Hallelujah. Then we which are alive and remain 
shall be caught up together, harapshad, with them in the clouds, to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord, as his word says in 1 Thessalonians. See you here, there, or in the air. Hallelujah!